Welcome to our analysis of a short circuit load on a transmission line. And it's modeled by a piece of line that's just shorted. We could see it over here. So we have the transmission line characteristic impedance Z0, and the load ideally is zero, a dead short. That's an ideal modelization or modeling of it. And there's the input impedance looking in, and that's not normalized. Now we normalize the load. Well, it's zero over this, so it's zero. The admittance normalized is the reciprocal of that, so it's infinite. It'll let everything through. We want to look at the value of gamma, the modulus. Of course, it has no phase because both ZL and Z0 are real. And if we substitute in for this situation, the magnitude of gamma is minus 1, and gamma itself is minus 1. Now we go into the textbook and we look and look at the input impedance Z in. So this is now normalized. And it's given by this relationship. Boy, what a messy relationship. I need some help figuring this out. Sam, good to see you. I hear someone needs help. I need help. This is such a mess. Can you help me simplify it? Oh, this, this is a different kind of help than Superman's used to, but Superman will try. What kind of help do you need? Well, start with gamma and all those exponentials drive me nuts. Okay. Okay, I can't do that first. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, well, we, we say here uh, gamma is negative one for a short circuit load. So we can just uh, simplify those to negative one. And I guess we can multiply the top and bottom with uh, e to the j beta l to get a more symmetric expression. Uh, it'll be more clear when I write it out. So it'll be one multiplied by e j beta l uh, minus, because of the negative one, e to the negative j beta l divided by, well, same thing as above with a sine flip. Very symmetric. Gee, that looks rather familiar. Where have we seen that before? Um, something to do with order? Yeah. Mm. Can you fish something out of this? Oh, OK. Well, the top part with the minus sign, so it's related to the sign. So it's 2j sine uh, the, the parameter beta l divided by 2 cos beta l. So obviously the twos cancel, and sine and cos, uh, sine divided by cos becomes 10, so you get j 10 beta l. Ooh, so much cleaner than before. Yeah, now let me see if I can do the input admittance. I think I can. Y in is, is equal uh, to... 1 over z in, small z in, because normalized. Yeah, and that's equal to the reciprocal of that. Okay. I think I can do this. Cotangent. Cotangent. And now let's think about where L should be in terms of magnitude. Let's put it on here. Right. And usually we, L is going to be between... Well, it's going to be bigger than zero, because what's a negative length to a line? And then we're going to keep the sign the same. So I think we want it to be lambda by two or four? Uh, I four. think four. So okay, we'll, to keep this in the same quadrant. quadrant. Yeah, we'll keep okay. that in the same quadrant. Okay, okay. So 0, L less than lambda <coughs> over 4. And you can see that when L is 0, if L was 0, so we're never right at 0. We're 0 plus a little bit. But if it were 0, Z in would be 0. Mm -hmm. But little y in would be 
that. Mm. Not very physical. I don't like having infinities in my answer. Mm -hmm. So we should always have L just a little bit bigger than zero. But if you look at this picture, L equals zero doesn't make any sense at all. Because then you don't have a transmission then line. Then I don't have any transmission line. Mm. So L is always going to be bigger than zero. So we're never going to have to worry about infinity. Only mathematicians worry about infinity. So we are going to explore this further when we look at our dear friend. Oh, the black magic Smith chart. The black magic, magic. Smith chart. And how it can be used for some geometrical appreciation of all this analytics. Thank you for coming along to help me with my no algebra. Problem. Huh, I think I hear someone that needs help. I need to go now. Bye, Matt. Bye.